Determining when a track has reached its final form can often feel like an elusive puzzle. And yet, once the core arrangement is in place, there are specific steps that I personally follow to ensure it's closer to completion. Now, perfection in music can be an endless pursuit. Recognizing when a track is good enough can be an art in itself. So today, I'm going to share with you 10 tips that I follow to make sure your tracks are more coherent, complete, and ready for the world to hear. Let's dive right into it. So here's a track I worked on months ago. It's called Elephant in the Room, and I'm planning to put it out. I'll just play a bit of it for you so you can get a vibe. And just so you know what you're seeing in this track, I have a general arrangement here laid out. We have 32 bars of intro, so each one of these blocks is a 16 bar section. As most of you should know, drum and bass typically works in 16 bars every time. There's usually a change every 16 bars. Following the intro, we have the main body. The main body is four blocks of 16, so it's 64 bars. And then you have the breakdown, which is one block or just 16 bars, followed by the second bar. Body, which is uh, four blocks of 16s here. So once I have the general track arranged and it's sounding pretty close to complete, the first thing I do is to make sure there are risers and impact sounds on key transition points. So in terms of risers, I typically like to have at the very end of the 16 bar block. I just find it helps make the transition into the next 16 bar block more smooth. So here's the end of the 16 bar block and we can just play it and then the next 16 bar introduces that vocal sample so this area is an opportune position for a riser because then it leads into the next 16 bar block so something like this over here would be perfect Notice how it makes the transition smoother. The next area to look at is the breakdown. Usually I like to start the breakdown with an impact sound. So notice there's a riser right before the breakdown. Listen to it. So not bad, but what if we include an impact right over here? Now that sounds much better. It sounds more like an impactful entry when we move into the breakdown. It's almost like a key signifier that we are now in the breakdown. So make sure you have risers and impacts at key transition points. That's at the end of 16s and also at key areas like the breakdown and even buildups. The next thing I like to do to make sure our track is more complete is to add drum fills or drum rolls to help with transitions. And this can be drum rolls during the build up into the drop or smaller drum fills in between main body blocks. So here's a key transition point that we were listening to earlier with the riser. So that's a shorter two bar kick roll. Sometimes you can even have a one bar or four bar kick rolls. It really depends on how long you want to build that up into the next section. Now remember, you also have the option of creating snare rolls or clap rolls or any other percussion. Kick was just what I decided to use with this track. Also, you can add kick rolls in the intro and breakdown. Here I have a longer kick roll. And looking at this one, the frequency of the kicks increase increases over time. So the first eight bars, I have a kick on every half bar. And then at the eight bar mark, I increase the frequency to a kick on every quarter note. And then after four bars of that, I have two bars of uh, kicks on every eighth and then every 16th. So you want to increase the frequency to increase the intensity. And of course, I'm building up the volume. Thank you. 
Another thing you can do instead of kick rolls is switching up the drums or breaks at that end point of the 16 bar block. So here's a break from the hybrid breaks pack, which contains an assortment of some really great sounding breaks, all played by the hybrid drummer who combines acoustic and synthetic drums to create some really dynamic drum sounds that are great for drum and bass. So we can easily slap this break in and then mute all the under drums when this break comes in. And this can also act as a transition helper for lack of better terms. So that's a nice little switch up right there. Another tip I do on almost every track is to add small pauses in between transition points. So right over here, I like to pause the very last bit right after the second snare of that bar. And this riser could probably pause right at this point as well. You could probably pause the bass here as well. So just highlighting and typing zero just mutes it. That's a quick way to do it. Mute all unnecessary parts to make that pause more impactful. Notice how much more impactful that second section comes in when we have that pause. Another thing to look out for is adding automation such as filter sweeps to help with the build of intros and breakdowns. So here's the intro and in, under the automation view, you can see that my vocal is being filtered down. Same as my rave stabs here. I'll just play them individually. The same thing happens to the rave stabs. So I have a low pass filter filtering out the sound before the track drops. That's just one option. Uh, there's other options such as using a high pass and slowly removing all the bottoms until you get to the drop. The idea here is you're removing audio or frequency energy so that when the main body drops, it's more impactful because you're removing more frequencies as it builds up and then the main body drops with full frequency. It just drops harder. much more impactful. Another thing about automation. So we talked about using filters and sweeps to remove energy so the main drop is more impactful. Now, another idea, and this might sound counterintuitive, is using automation to create more intensity. So instead of removing sound, you're adding more sound. And one way to do this is to gradually increase the intensity of your effects, such as reverb and delay as it builds up. The idea here is you're building more energy before the track drops. So here I added more reverb to that rave stab as the track progresses. But you notice here that as it reaches to the top, I then bring the reverb, a dry wet all the way down to zero. So it gets to a complete pause or silence. So although this may sound counterintuitive when we compare it with the technique of filtering out energy, it all works in tandem because it's all coalescing to the same point here where it pauses. Every year, I try to improve my music production by elevating my sound. So this year, I've been focusing on my mixes and music theory. And there's a number of classes on Skillshare that has been helping me out and I highly recommend them. The first one is audio mixing on the go, professional sound 
without a studio. In this class, renowned DJ and producer King Arthur offers a class that helps you achieve professional mixes with a focus on level matching, frequency layering, filter utilization, and sound instrument relationships. His technique can be used on any reference environment. He even mixed his latest track on iPod headphones because it's all about knowing your listening environment. I trust this guy because he plays internationally. Also, I really like how he breaks down a great mix into five simple elements. Loudness, brightness, fullness, low end, and width. The other class is how to create amazing chord progressions. In this comprehensive class, Michael Bragstorm, an experienced composer, guides us through the intricacies of chord progressions and harmony, providing foundational knowledge and live examples. You'll be able to write with a wider range of emotions. He expertly deconstructs chords, highlighting the emotional impact of each individual note, and illustrates how each can be distributed across different instruments, from their bass, mid and top notes. Now I know Skillshare is known for its music production, video editing, and illustrating classes. However, they also offer hundreds of career focused classes, making it ideal for your personal and professional reinvention. Perfecting your music is only half the battle. The other half is ensuring it reaches the right ears, which requires great marketing skills. Skillshare's marketing your business or brand with video series can improve your skills on popular platforms like Instagram and TikTok, which is very important in today's artist landscape. And now's your chance to try it out. The first thousand people that use my link down in the description will receive one month free trial on Skillshare. So I hope you'll check out Skillshare and take your goals to the next level. Another thing is since we mostly work on instrumental music, sometimes it's nice to have a sample that is recognizable, it makes the track a little more identifiable. So oftentimes near the end of the process, I might include a vocal at key areas of the track. So right before the drop here, could add a vocal at that pause. So have this little punctuation vocal here to help before the drop. It's just a nice lead in into the drop. It makes the track a little more unique because you have this sample that uh, sounds kind of cool and gives it a little more character. Not to mention when I was working on this track, I didn't have this main vocal uh, lead in the intro. It was simply just the rave stabs and the hi-hats. I just felt had it, having this vocal loop would give it a little more identity, so I added this vocal on top. I just took the vocal and chopped it up so it played a nice unique sequence. Sometimes it's better to chop it up a little so it's more your own as opposed to using the vocal raw. It's sounding more complete. The next finishing touch I make the tracks to make it more complete is to add reversed reverb on key samples. Reverse reverb acts kind of like a riser where you kind of have like this suction effect which sucks into nothingness. So key samples that I use on reverse reverb could be synth sounds or even vocals. So here's that yeah vocal we were playing earlier. And typically you just take that vocal, you add a ton of reverb. I make sure the mix is 100% wet. Uh, you can make the length shorter if you want. We can adjust it after. Essentially, you want to reverse the vocal first. So quick tip, highlight the sample and type R. They'll reverse the sample. And then create a new audio track and just make sure the input is set to that vocal sample. So that's channel 19 and then hit record and record the output. All right now that is a bit low. So we're just going to bring it up here. So here's the reverse reverb. Now going back to this original vocal, remove the reverb and then unreverse it. And what you want to do is 
position this reverb so it swoops into this vocal. So taking this reverb, we want to reverse this so it becomes like a riser. So it swoops in and we would just want to place it so the peak point of that reverb uh, meets the beginning of that sample. So somewhere around there, you're going to have to play it by ear. Sometimes adding a short fade here just helps with the connection, the solo, the two so we can hear together. This could probably move up a bit over here and can shorten this section here. Adjust the fade in and let's hear it now. Yeah. That sounds much better. And of course, if you want a shorter rising effect, you can shorten the sound. Just make sure you fade it in like that. Yeah. And then we can hear it with the drop. Sounding dope. Now, when we're creating our arrangement, oftentimes producers take the lazy route and we mirror image the first body with the second body. It's just a cut and paste and a repeat. I find it's more interesting when we add subtle differences to the second body so there's something new to look forward to when the track drops again. Also, at event, when you hear the music live, it's much more impactful and just feels awesome when the change track actually changes up. So here's the original bass line. And as you can see, it's just one note playing the E across the two bars. So typical thing I like to do, especially with drum and bass, is just change up the notes of the bass line at the second drop. So here at the second drop, we can see we have two additional notes before the E plays. Now they're overlapping because my synth is actually a mono synth and only one note will ever play at the same time. The reason why I have it overlap is that there is legato, uh, which means that when this note finishes, the next note will continue where the last note finishes off and there's a bit of glide between the notes. So here's the new pattern. So notice the two notes, which glides into the E note afterwards. Here it is with the drums. Much more of a vibe. And by the way, this Womp bass and all the other bass sounds in this track can all be found in my Gnarly Serum preset pack. And you can learn more about that pack down in the links below. Another finishing touch is to add random edits to your track. And this could be anything from drum edits, little bass switch ups, or even just glitch effects to your track. So for this section here, I'm just gonna add a random pause here. And that happens over here on the second 16 bar block. And then on the next 16 here, I might add a double kick on the first bar. Little changes like that are noticeable to the listener and just makes the track a little more predictable. On this uh, fourth 16 here, I might take out the first kick and perhaps add a double snare. Sometimes it could be even just effective to remove the drums altogether for an entire bar or two. I quite like how that sounds. Now going back to the reverse reverb, I actually did a reverse reverb to the uh, main vocal loop. I just thought it helped when the vocal drops in at this uh, fourth block here to have a bit of the reverse reverb into that vocal. And I actually took out that other reverb in the intro. I found that more impactful without it. So here it is. And I like that with the combination of the pause and the reverse reverb. It works real nice together. All right, now that we've done the bulk of the changes, let's check out the track in full.
and that's my track elephant in the room i think i'll be putting out this track soon just stay posted on my social media to learn more one thing i forgot to mention about this track is i added random effects throughout the track to help with the progression for example i added these random laser sounds of tons of reverb These kind of atmospheric sounds such as drones, lasers, and random atonal sounds can add some variation and uniqueness, unpredictability to your tracks. It's all about cleverly placing them in key areas to make the track more interesting. And there you go. These are my 10 tips on what I do when my track is near completion. These are the finishing and polishing touches to make the track complete. And once it's complete, you can move on to getting the mix right and sending it off to master. And by the way, my name is Strange Eye, and if you want to improve your music production and sound design, especially in dance music and drum and bass, then subscribe and follow my channels. And if you want to support, I have a number of sample packs, preset packs, and Ableton kits to help you along your journey. You can learn more down in the links below. If you want to learn more about how to arrange drum and bass, check this video up here. If you want to learn how I made that womp bass, check this video up here. All right, that's pretty much it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Keep practicing, and I'll see you at the next video.